So first of all, I would like you all to close your eyes and think what you were passionate for when you were a child and if something has changed. Maybe you wanted to be an F-16 pilot, a designer or a rock star, for example. I give you a few seconds to think about it. Good, I see many closed eyes. <laughs> Secondly, let me ask you, where are you now? Are you still driving towards your passion or has something changed? And if yes, why has it changed? Again, few moments to think. As you know, my name is Cinzia Sanvido, and you might wonder why I'm here to give a TED talk at the University of St. Gallen. I'm not an academic, I'm not an art, art historian, and I'm not a broker working at some stock exchange. But what I am for sure is passionate, authentic, and detail-loving. Today, I will talk about the power of passion and the impact it has when deciding on how you want to live your life. The questions I asked you before, for some of you, are very easy to answer, maybe for others not. For me, they were easy and clear, but at that time, my parents didn't allow me to follow my dream so I had to change my plan, and I went into banking. But before I continue, let me tell you a little bit about my story. It all started in 1988. As a young trainee, I was living in New York for a year on an exchange program. And that year, Basquiat died. I don't know if you know anything about him. He was a young painter who raised to success during the 80s, being in the circle of uh, Andy Warhol. When he, uh, his mom was supporting him since he was a child and inspired him to develop his uh, talent, and she took him quite often to local museum in New York. When he died, all the media talk about his premature death by overdose. He was 28 years old. By seeing images of his paintings all over the media, my curiosity led me to investigate a little bit more why his art was so highly regarded. Because to me, the paintings looked a bit childish, but they were not. He was able, in his unique way, to criticize uh, greed and nepotism in the world of art, for example. Upon his death, I realized I always felt his presence in the city. He used to sign himself as Samo on graffiti all over the world and the subway station in New York. When I came back home, I kind of parked my interest in the back part of my brain until 1997, when I accompanied someone to Venice for a vernissage at the Il Capricorno Gallery. The, uh, the gallery's name, Bruna Eicheling, was very well known at that time for showing the most promising English and American young artist. Bruna herself was a character. She was always seen wearing in white, with a pearl necklace, white shoes, white earring, blonde, a kind of uh, Miss Marple to me. Uh, she ran her gallery since the early 70s until her passing away during the pandemic at the age of 95. 
contemporary art was her passion. And this was re the real starting point for my passion, which Bruna contributed to stimulating me. And by the way, she didn't even study art history. So, as I said, I was present at the Vernissage, and to my surprise, the artist was there too. And this is the big difference, because you can't talk to Picasso or Van Gogh anymore, but you can talk to contemporary artists. You can listen directly from them, the message they want to communicate, the way they want to communicate. You can listen to their struggle and their ambition, and this enriches the experience. After this first experience, I went back many times and I had the opportunity to talk to many other artists. It goes without saying that I met many uh, interesting collectors who were attending the same event. And I have to say that I'm still in contact with many of them and sometimes we meet at art fairs or art exhibitions around the world. Then there is a second starting point in my passion, and that is when I joined Julius Baer Art Committee. Julius Baer has a collection of 5,000 artworks, and it's growing every year. And it is a great opportunity being here today because this university has also a very high regarded collection. So it was 2009 uh, when the former curator of the collection came to the Lugano premises on inventory purpose. By accident, I ran into him uh, while he was looking at an artwork on the corridor. I introduced myself and I had a nice exchange with him. After a few months, he called me out of Zurich asking if I was interested in joining the art committee. I think I felt over the moon. I was and still am very excited about this opportunity. And today I'm honored to be the president of the art committee. On a professional uh, side, I can tell you that I'm involved in organizing client events, not only to promote the collection, but also to improve sensitivity towards arts. And lately, I've been involved in setting up an art club in Lugano for our colleagues for the same reasons. If I think of my life in these last 25 years, I can tell you that it has been so intense and ex exciting. I've been traveling a lot, combining it with art exhibition, art experience, encounters, and discovery. I met many gallerists with whom I'm cultivating a very respectful relationship without mentioning all the artists I got the chance to talk to and with whom I'm in constant contact, even uh, visiting them uh, at their studios. So as you can see, contemporary art shaped my life. Uh, it has contributed to raise my uh, self-confidence and awareness. It has been uh, instrumental uh, to develop my openness and my curiosity. It has trained me to look and observe deeply, uh, giving importance to the concept and not only to the aesthetical side of art, and this is important in life in any circumstances. So why I'm telling you my story? Because I think it's one of the many uh, stories that you can across in your life and realize that passion can have a big impact in changing your life. 
If I didn't have this passion, I wouldn't be here today trying to convey to you my message. As you can see, I'm a private banker, but my passion made my life more exciting. So my suggestion is try to combine your passion with your career and your life will be better. You will make people around you happier. If you have a passion, you'll always meet inspiring people in your life, and this will change completely your attitude. Now, to conclude, let me ask you a few questions more. Why would you put limit on yourself? Why would you accept restriction imposed by your family, friends, or the society? It won't be always easy. You might struggle, but I tell you, it's much better to live a life full of excitement or a life that you dislike with all the thousands of opportunities that you can have in the world. As I said at the beginning, I'm not an art historian, but nonetheless, my passion really uh, drives me towards uh, a better life. And uh, by the way, when I was a chi um, yeah, child, young, I wanted to be an artist myself, but I'd rather be passionate. Thank you.